Sunhaven is a giant game, to say the least, spanning over three large and unique map areas, Sunhaven, Nalvari, and Withergate. Each area comes with exclusive treasure troves of exclusive items, farms, crops, specialized currency, and vibrant communities of NPCs, so it's understandable that it can sometimes feel very overwhelming to play, especially for the first time. Not knowing what you're supposed to do can cause needless confusion and frustration. So for today's video, I've compiled a list of some helpful and crucial do's and don'ts when it comes to Sunhaven. First things first, don't ignore the in-game settings. Sunhaven is a highly configurable game with lots of options to tailor your experience to your playstyle. With options like changing your in-game day length, toggling helpful tips or seasonal effects on your farms like pests, crop effects, and bosses. And there's even an invincibility option for maximum coziness. Do take your time to go through and configure your settings to whatever playstyle suits you best. And feel free to alter it as you'd like. Don't let anyone shame you for enabling or disabling certain features. The choices are there for a reason, and they can be changed at any point in time during your playthrough. So you don't have to commit to certain settings for a whole playthrough. So say you're not in the mood for intense combat one day, you can just turn on invincibility for the time being and just turn it off later when you are in the mood for a fight. Also, as I touched on earlier, in the game menu, you can turn off seasonal pests, bosses, and crop effects. Turning off seasonal pests eliminate the need for scarecrows, so you no longer need a different type for each individual season. But I'd argue that the most important setting here is the day speed. I tend to adjust my day speed very frequently, making the days longer when I'm going on a big journey to the mines or a different region, and making the days shorter when I don't know what to do with my day and I'm just waiting for the time to pass by. Don't ignore the museum curator. The vast museum in Sunhaven is sort of similar to that of Stardew Valley, where you make donations for prizes in return. The main difference being that the spots for your donations are all grouped into different rooms and categories. So when you complete a particular collection, it will drop rewards for you. But the rewards don't end there. A lot of players may be unaware to the fact that the man at the front desk has an entirely separate reward system that seems to be based on the total number of items that you've donated to the museum. Do be sure to talk to him at the front desk periodically and ask about your rewards. He offers the player very useful things like community tokens, money, experience points, potions, and more. Don't forget about your weekly freebies. There are a plethora of hidden little gifts all around Sunhaven. You just have to know where to find them. I've mentioned some of these hidden freebies in past videos on my channel, but I have since discovered some more. So if you don't already know, let's recap. Once per week, interacting with the Fountain of Elios grants plus four bonus mana. Similarly, there's a moon well that is originally blocked by a snackoon near the eastern forest that grants plus five mana. The group of birds outside the general store drop a free wheat seed. A bit south of the birds, there's a wheelbarrow that drops a free potato seed. Interacting with the combat dummy next to Rosa at the barracks grants combat experience. Fixing the bird in the front of the library grants free exploration experience. The frog that can be found sitting outside the pet store occasionally gives the player a fly that can be gifted to NPCs as a neutrally liked gift. A turtle can be found flipped upside down on the beach. Flipping it back over can result in a free diamond. The fireplace near the tavern drops a free fire crystal, and south from there is a little apple orchard area run by a small rabbit Amari community. Most things in this area are not harvestable, but there are two harvestable machines at the bottom right corner of the orchard. A blue rose honey from a beehive, an apple jam from the jam maker. Do be sure to pick a day of the week that works best for you and go around to collect all or most of your freebies. The most beneficial one is probably the permanent mana boost from the Fountain of Elios and the Moon Well, because you could never have enough mana in Sunhaven. Don't avoid cooking meals with your harvested crops or forageables. Cooking and baking as many different dishes as you can in Sunhaven is majorly beneficial not only for boosting your skills and stats upon consumption, but it also makes your profit margins much, much higher compared to selling the raw materials. Hovering over the ingredients in the cooking menu will show you how much the base ingredients sell for compared to the fully cooked dish. And 99% of the time, it is much more profitable to sell fully cooked meals. Do cook and bake as much as you can. It's a good idea to have a shed fully dedicated to this with all of your cooking machines, as well as a few chests filled with ingredients, crops, and fully cooked meals. Having meals saved in storage is great for a lot of things, like bringing hearty and helpful meals to the mines or boss battles, and it's great for making money and gift giving. Also, when consuming meals for stat boosts, be sure to pay attention to how many times you've consumed a specific meal. This can be done by either hovering over the meal or checking through the game's encyclopedia menu. The buffs you get from eating food give diminishing returns the more you eat it. Don't harvest dead 
crops. Once harvested, dead crops sell for a measly one coin, which is a big loss of money and time. Do right click on the dead crops with your hoe to get your precious seeds back. This trick comes in handy when a crop goes out of season and dies, and also when progressing the main storyline and undergoing the path to Nelvari quest line. This quest line requires the player to have a failed attempt at growing grapes, resulting in 40 useless dead crops. But not anymore. Digging those crops back up will put the money right back into your pockets, as you can plant these new seeds all over again once you learn how to infuse them properly. This also works on crops that haven't died or fully matured, so if you misplaced a seed or you want to rearrange your farm, you can just dig them right back up and replant them wherever you want. Don't neglect the town. As you initially arrive in Sunhaven, it quickly becomes apparent that the town is in need of some improvements. As you delve into expanding your farm and exploring Nelvari and Withergate, it's easy to overlook the opportunity opportunity to revitalize the town that welcomed you. Do remember to use your time and resources to rebuild structures around town. You can rebuild the statue by the library, the doghouse by Topi and Pod's homes, and tons of stores across the main town. Repairing these will grant access to new rewards, new shops, affinity with the townsfolk, and new gameplay elements. Don't needlessly water and harvest every crop or flower. Watering is of course needed for your crops to fully mature, but once they do fully grow in, there are some reasons to leave your fully grown crops or flowers alone. On your Nelvari farm, leaving certain crops planted will attract relevant critters and wildlife that will bring you different resources. In Sunhaven, you may want to keep flowers to enhance your beehives or to create bouquets. Do thoughtfully leave certain crops or flowers alone based on beehives or farm. These fully matured crops do not need to be watered to stay alive. Just be sure to either have a scarecrow to prevent pests or have pests disabled in your settings. When creating a character, you have the option to choose from a variety of different races. Angels, Amari, Demons, Elementals, Elves, Humans, and Naga. Each race comes with different perks. Don't worry about picking the perfect race when initially creating your character, as you will be able to change your race and appearance later on in the game as often as you would like. Do be sure to repair the town salon as soon as possible. Once fully repaired, the player can go into the salon to completely recustomize their character by speaking to the vendor, Billy. This acts as a way to access the character creator UI even after starting the game. The building begins being rebuilt after donating 30 wood planks, 10 fabric, and 3,000 coins. Don't be monogamous. The people of Sunhaven, Nelvari, and Withergate are polyamorous, and it kind of makes sense given that the world is very much fantasy driven. Why would magical creatures give into monogamy? And with how attractive each dateable is, how would it even be possible to pick one? If you have more than one character who has sparked your interest in Sunhaven, do romance them all without any sense of guilt. The game allows you to date as many characters as your heart desires with no consequences. This means that you can unlock the third row of hearts for each candidate, get 15 hearts with all of them, and see all of the different dates and dialogue that each character has to offer with no drama or hard feelings. Hearts will never deteriorate when you don't talk to an NPC, so just take your time and get to know everyone. Don't ignore mods. There's an ever-growing population of mods on Nexus Mods for Sunhaven that are absolutely essential. Do browse all of the different mods that Nexus Mods has to offer. I have a video on my channel showcasing some of my favorite quality of life mods that the Sunhaven modding community has has created for all of us to enjoy. I will leave a link to that video in the description so you can check it out after this one. To name a few though, there's crafting from storage to free up inventory space and make crafting a lot easier, chest labels for better organization, museum tracker to help you figure out what you need to donate to the museum still, and so much more. These mods are designed to enhance your gameplay experience without feeling too cheaty. It's a great way to make your playthrough a much more enjoyable experience. Don't rush the game or try to have a perfect playthrough. It's okay to make rookie mistakes and learn from them. Sunhaven is designed to be a relaxing, cozy, and overall chill experience. Do take things at your own personal pace. Other than billboard requests and dates, there are absolutely no time limits when it comes to progressing the main storyline. Progressing the main story too quickly becomes very overwhelming very fast. Managing two to three farms at once is not an easy task. Take your time to get to know the ins and out of each region one at a time. Venturing off to another region to check out the shops, forage, and to talk to other NPCs PCs is all fine and dandy, but I would definitely take it slow when it comes to managing more than one farm at a time. Learn things and experiment as you go, ask for help with something you don't understand, and in general just enjoy the experience. Like I said, there are no time limits and there's nothing that you can lose permanently. There's always the next year to do things again. The faster you rush through the game, the less enjoyable the overall experience is going to be. And that my friends are all of the do's and don'ts that I have compiled for this video. Do you have any do's and don'ts that I didn't mention today? You're more than welcome to leave yours in the comments 
comments down below so that we can all help each other out. Sunhaven has kind of had a chokehold on me recently and I'm very excited for the future of this game. I think Sunhaven will be a massive game once it eventually, hopefully, makes it to the Nintendo Switch. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye!